Just another brother with another humble question. Just another brother with another humble question. Uh. Welcome to a brother with questions. I am your host, B. Period. Man, I saw this news story and uh, I just had to comment on it real quick. Uh, they did a censure of Congressman Rashida Tlaib. She is one of the squad. And so uh, we're going to check out this news story real quick and uh, just hear a little bit about uh, the censure and what she said um, on the floor um, and, and briefly about what led to her censure. Here we go. Then with Juan Gonzalez. On Tuesday, the House of Representatives voted to censure Democratic Congressmember Rashida Tlaib, the only Palestinian American in Congress, for her criticism of Israel. The vote was 234 to 188, with 22 Democrats joining Republicans to censure Tlaib. Prior to the vote, the Congresswoman spoke from the House floor. I'm the only Palestinian American serving in Congress, Mr. Chair, and my perspective is needed here now more than ever. I will not be silenced, and I will not let you distort my words. Folks forget I'm from the city of Detroit, the most beautiful blackest city in the country where I learned to speak truth to power even if my voice shakes. Trying to bully or censor me won't work because this movement for a ceasefire is much bigger than one person. It's growing every single day. There are millions of people across our country who oppose Netanyahu's extremism and are done watching our government support collective punishment and the use of white phosphorus bombs that melt flesh to the bone. They are done watching our government, Mr. Chair, supporting cutting off food, water, electricity, and medical care to millions of people with nowhere to go. Like me, Mr. Chair, they don't believe the answer to war crimes is more war crimes. The refusal of Congress and the administration to acknowledge Palestinian lives is chipping at way at my soul. Over 10,000 Palestinians have been killed. Majority, majority were children. But let me be clear. My criticism has always been of the Israeli government and Netanyahu's actions. It is important to separate people and governments, Mr. Chair. No government is beyond criticism. The idea that criticizing the government of Israel is anti-Semitic sets a very dangerous precedent, and it's being used to silence diverse voices speaking up for human rights across our nation. Do you realize what it's like, Mr. Chair, for the people outside the chamber right now, listening in agony to their own government dehumanizing them? To hear the President of the United States, we helped elect, dispute death tolls as we see video after video of dead children and parents under rubble. Mr. Chair, do you know what it's like to fear rising hate crimes, to know how Islamophobia and anti-Semitism makes us all less safe and worry that your own child might suffer the horrors that six-year-old Wadiat did in Illinois. I can't believe I have to say this, but pa Palestinian people are not disposable. As Congressmember Rashida Tlaib composed herself, her sister Congresswoman Ilhan Omar put her hand on her shoulder, the only other Muslim woman in Congress. We are human beings, just like anyone else. My city, my grandmother, like all Palestinians, just wants to live her life with freedom and human dignity we all deserve. Speaking up to save lives, Mr. Chair, no matter faith, no matter ethnicity, should not be controversial in this chamber. The cries of the Palestinian and, ch Palestinian and Israeli children sound no different to me. Why? What? I don't understand. Is why the cries of Palestinians sound different to you all. We cannot lose our shared humanity, Mr. Chair. I hear the voices of advocates in Israel, in Palestine, across America, and around the world for peace. I am inspired by their courageous, the courageous survivors in Israel who have lost loved ones, yet are calling for a ceasefire and the end to violence. I am grateful to the, to the people in the streets for the peace, peace movement with countless Jewish Americans across the country standing up and lovingly saying, not in our name. We will continue to call for a ceasefire, Mr. Chair, for the immediate delivery of critical humanitarian aid to Gaza, for the release of all hostages and those arbitrarily detained, and for every American to come home. 
We will continue to work for real lasting peace that upholds human rights and dignity of all people and centers in peaceful coexistence between Israelis and Palestinians and censures no one, no, no one, and ensures that no person, no child has to suffer or live in fear of violence. 71% of Michigan Democrats support a ceasefire. So you can try to censor me, but you can't silence their voices. I urge my colleagues to join with the majority of Americans and support a ceasefire now to save as many lives as possible. President Biden must listen to and represent all of us, not just some of us. I urge the president to have the courage to call for a ceasefire and the end of killings. Thank you, and I yield. So right after that, as you heard the lady say, they voted to censure her. And so I had, I don't know if you, if you like me, but I had to look that up. I didn't know what censure was. And so basically it is a procedural, uh, task to essentially say we don't support what she is saying. Um, it's basically what it does. Um, so it's a way to separate what the Congress believes from this particular one congressman. Um, and so it's, it's just a, it's just a tool. Just the rally and cry to say, you know, we don't we don't support what she's trying to do here. But the the question I have to ask, and the question I'm gonna go back to, and the thing that I want to focus on here, is is this America or is this Israel? That's my question. Is this America? Or is this Israel? Here's here's the reason why I ask. Because I thought in America, there's something called free speech. And free speech means you get to say whatever it is that you'd like to say. Whether I agree with you or not, you're still allowed to say it. And so if we still believe in that, why is it necessary to censure anybody for any reason. Because regardless of whether or not you agree with what she said, and 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 again, as, as I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't agree with a lot that I hear the squad is talking about. So I'm not here to tell you that the squad is amazing and we should just take everything they say is true. I'm not, that's not my point. Because I'm not that guy. Most things that I looked into, I disagree with. But I also disagree with the fact that we need to censure her as if to say that she doesn't have the right to say what she wants to say. After all, this is a Palestinian woman representing a district that they say is mostly Muslim, which means that she's probably not the only Palestinian woman that lives in the neighborhood or the district that she represented. And here she is in Congress speaking on behalf of probably the people in her district, and yet we are telling her we don't support this. This is not, this is America. This is not about whether you not support this. This is about her right to say it. And then y'all can disagree with everything she said, but she still has a right to say it. She still has a right to represent the people that sent her to Congress and speak on their behalf. It's like we have lost our sense of who we are simply because of a terrorist group and now a ally that we support. And so now anything against that is just wrong. I mean, there, there was a congressman that said that, that he looked forward to them flattening. Or no, I'm paraphrasing. But he talked about Gaza being a parking lot once Israel was done. And we were cool with that. The idea that he was just, that Israel was just going to flatten Gaza and then start over from scratch. But yet a Palestinian woman is supposed to hear him say that and be like, okay, I guess they're going to flatten Gaza and, and flatten them from scratch. What do you expect? another congressman to say when you hear a fellow congressman say something like that, especially when those are the people you, those are your kinfolk. 
She probably has some family that's over there. But we want to get up here, and what is she supposed to say? Well, I support Israel. No. And, and again, right or wrong, disagree or, dis or not, she has a right to say that. And if Palestinians don't have a right to speak in a free country where all hearts and minds are supposed to be represented, but you're telling me that when the, when the president gets up there and tells us about how he's concerned about the Palestinian lives that aren't related to Hamas, but we won't even let a Palestinian speak in our own Congress? I'm, I'm not here to make any judgments. I'm, I think you ought to draw your own conclusions here. But I'm having a hard time figuring out to matching up, let me say that, to matching up the words to the actions. This, isn't that what we like to say? I know what your mouth say, but I'm waiting to see what your actions say. So I'm going to say that to America right now. I know what your mouth say, but I'm going I'm to look to see what your actions say. And I'm going to leave it right there. I'm B. Period, man. Like and subscribe, comment. I'm out.